Good morning, I'm here with Jennifer Choi of the Institutional Limited Partners Association. Good morning, Jennifer. Please tell us what ILPA for short does. Good morning, David. I'm happy to. ILPA is the only association dedicated to the interest of limited partners globally. We represent over 600 institutional allocators across more than 50 countries around the world. By our estimates, that amounts to about $3 trillion in U.S. dollars and assets under management in the private markets invested into funds. We're really focused on executive education standards, best practices, and serving as the voice of the limited partner in the markets in which they invest, whether that's industry-facing dialogue or conversations with policymakers, which I'm happy to share more about. And what's on their mind? What's keeping them awake at night? This has been a rough stretch as the market has taken a turn. And so I think a lot of it is how do we maintain discipline in this market and not pull back and repeat the mistakes of the GFC when you saw so many LPs who were impacted by a denominator effect at that time really step back on their allocations. And if anything, LPs are trying to make sure that they're able to continue to deploy capital into this market in the right way with the right managers but that's a, that's a core concern. And also managing sort of a multitude of, of risk and greater complexity in the markets today than there were even a few years ago, even in the COVID era. And so whether that's how do you ensure strong returns in a high inflation, high interest rate environment, or how do you navigate things like new regulatory developments here in Europe with SFDR or AIFMD, or the new SEC rules in the US, there's just a multitude of issues that LPs are grappling with right now. Do you think they're doing well? And is their outlook improving or are they still a bit flat? They're hearing that a flat is the new up. So if you're able to continue to deploy in this environment and you're not seeing any walk back in your allocation, in your capital budget, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. But there mm -hmm. are LPs in this market who have money. They're in the money. They're looking for investment opportunities. They want to actively deploy. But it's also about making sure where you do exercise that ability to deploy, you're putting it into things that will serve you well over this next cycle. And so hearing a lot about looking at private debt allocations, for example, and how to take advantage of that in this environment. Are we on the cusp of a distressed debt opportunity um, over the next one to two years? So being disciplined, maintaining that rigor, continuing to be in the market, but being smart about the spots that you pick. So what are you focusing on in the medium term as ILPA? So um, a few things. One is the continued creativity in the fund financing environment. This is really essential for providing the liquidity that GPs need to do their jobs, to deliver returns for LPs. And so one of the newer phenomena we've really seen over the last few years is NAV-based financing. And for GPs and LPs alike, wrapping our arms around what does this mean? And particularly from an LP's perspective, is this a net positive? Can it be a net positive? And if so, how? And a lot of that comes back to transparency. Um, we're also, I think, internalizing and absorbing what a new policy environment means for private equity. The SEC released their private fund advisors rule just in August. And it's going to impact nearly the entire industry globally, just about anybody who has exposure to the U.S. and is regulated by the SEC. And it's going to mean enhanced reporting. It's going to mean enhanced disclosures to the benefit of LPs, but it's an elevated compliance burden for the GPs. It's a bit of a headache for them? It will, it will certainly yield effort, and it will require some investment of time and resources and costs. And today, LPs are bearing that cost, and so we'll see how this all plays out. But whether you're an SEC-regulated GP today or not, I think this will have an impact on expectations globally among LPs, regardless of where they are, regardless of where they invest. Well, transparency cannot be a bad thing for an industry often accused of being a bit secretive, right? You would think, you would think, but transparency to what end and at what cost, are, those are always the questions that follow. But we at ILBA are um, optimistic that this will be a net positive for the industry. It's going to increase competition in a good way. And we think that it's really going to compel LPs and GPs to strike a better balance in their decisions around manager selection on the part of the LPs and in discipline on the part of the GPs. 
Well, it sounds great. So let's hope you're right and everybody benefits. Thank you.